Welcome to Property Ladder, the series that shows you how to make a big cash profit from doing up houses. Meet 28-year-old Talat Mukhtar. He currently works as a merchant banker, but wants to give it all up to become a property developer. Although he has no experience, Talat's just bought an empty shell in trendy Shoreditch, East London. It's on the third floor of a new development of flats with offices below, most of which is still being built. He plans to fit out this concrete shell and sell it on, making a whopping profit of £100,000. I'm really excited about it, always have been. It's a vision, it's a dream, really, it is. Talat's shell is 900 square feet, which is as big as a badminton court. He plans to turn this space into an upmarket two-bedroom apartment. This is a massive project for someone with no previous experience, as it's nothing more than a shell with only basic plumbing and electricity. It's also a big investment, which Talat is financing with savings and loans. Wow, this is it. What a great space. This is fantastic. It's amazing, isn't it? So how much did you actually buy the flat for? I paid £220,000 for it. And how much are you planning on spending on it? Around about £30,000. And so then you'd be in at £250,000. How much do you think you'll be able to sell it for? £350,000 is what I'm hoping for. So that's £100,000 profit? That's it. And what are you going to do with all that money? Get out of banking and move into property development, hopefully. Talat bought the apartment for £220,000. His development budget is £30,000. He wants to sell for £350,000, making a profit of £100,000 before tax and legal fees. Not only has Talat no experience as a property developer, he's also planning to be his own architect, something I really wouldn't recommend. But he already has his floor plan. So tell me about how the layout's going to be. Two bedrooms, two bathrooms, one en suite and one f yeah, to be accessed by the rest of the flat. Trying not to put any you know, funny corridors or anything which lead to rooms, just you, know, you access everything from the main space. Talat is absolutely right to be including two bedrooms and two bathrooms, as this arrangement will undoubtedly add most value. As you enter the property, the first thing you will see is the large floor-to-ceiling windows located at the front of the building. These will act as the focal point for the apartment. Talat intends to have the kitchen, the living area and the entrance as one open space at the front of the flat. From this space you will access all the other rooms. There will be a double bedroom and a main bathroom. The master bedroom with an ensuite shower room will be located at the rear of the property. But Talat's apartment is on the third floor, and the only exit is through the open plan kitchen living area. From my experience, this layout will not comply with building and fire regulations, and if Talat doesn't address this issue, he'll be in big trouble. I suspect you're going to have an issue with building regulations with this, because... From the bedrooms, you have to go through a habitable room to get out to the staircase. Okay. And as far as I know, that doesn't comply with fire regulations. Have you spoken to um, building regulations no, and fire I regulations? Yeah. They're just around the corner. I, I plan to do that. That probably is something you possibly should have Done first. investigated before you bought it. This is serious stuff. Talat bought this property with a vision to create a flowing open plan space. But his vision might never happen. Acting as your own architect is an ambitious undertaking for anyone. Architects train for seven years. They charge about £55 an hour for drawings, but their vast knowledge can save you precious time and money. By taking on this role himself, Talat set himself a big challenge. I think you're absolutely right to be putting two bedrooms and two bathrooms to maximise the value of this flat. It's quite a limited market and there are quite a lot of flats like this, so you have to make this flat better than all the rest to achieve what you want to achieve. And so you desperately need your wow factor here. And right. I'm not quite sure where you're going to get it yet, 
but you have to make that wow factor somewhere. Talat's going for big bucks with his property. To achieve his top selling price, it's crucial he makes it stand out from the rest. Fashionable Shoreditch specializes in loft style living, which is the market Talat's aiming for. But the competition is fierce. There's no shortage of beautiful apartments to buy and the standards are really high. Loft living offers a unique environment unlike any traditional living space. The most desirable and expensive properties are developed from old converted factories, many of which retain the original features and character of the building. As a new developer, Talat is taking a huge risk investing so much in such a small and competitive market, especially as his property is only average in size and as a new build lacks the character and charm of these conversions. To achieve his goal with this development, Talat's got to match the high standards dictated by this top-end, high-spec market. Time to check out the competition. This is a similar square footage but it's actually only one bedroom and one bathroom, and it's on at 350,000. Mine's a completely different style. It's size-wise, it's very interesting to compare, but this has different features from mine. Mine would be much more modern than this one. So you feel that yours will be appealing to a smaller niche market? Yeah. This is a slightly bigger flat than yours, only by a few square meters. Yeah. But it's at 435,000 pounds. 435. Is... £85,000 more than your top estimate. It's got two double bedrooms, two bathrooms, and I feel this is a superb finish. You need to have this attention to detail when you're doing your flat to achieve your top price, which I think is entirely realistic. And wardrobes, you see, these are actually freestanding wardrobes. See, it looks like it's just part of the wall, and that's, that's the kind of thing I want. Is this limestone or yeah, what is this? Yeah, it's it... limestone. They have used a lot of basic raw materials, yeah. which works incredibly well. What you're trying to achieve when you finish your flat is somebody will come in, look at it and be inspired and think, wow, this is fantastic. The look that Talat needs to achieve with his development doesn't come cheap, but he only has £30,000. He estimates spending £8,000 on all building work, including electrics and plumbing. £4,300 will be spent on the flooring. He set aside a total of £14,000 for the kitchen and the two bathrooms. That leaves £3,700 for contingencies, including professional fees and mortgage costs bringing the total budget to £30,000. For the kind of property and market, I think this budget is too tight. It's two weeks after our meeting and work hasn't started yet. Even after my warning about fire regulation issues, Talat's still hoping to have the open plan space he's always wanted. He submitted his original plans to the building regulations officer, and today he's about to find out if his amateur architect's layout will get the go-ahead. Hello, Sarah. How's it going? Okay, so the guy has basically uh, told me what I really need to do, as we've discussed previously, is to put a wall creating a lobby area. I've got to scrap all my plans for this whole open plan space, but I've got to now redesign everything to try and accommodate for this big wall. It's going to be spanking. Spanking? <laughs> you usually have to go for Soho for that. <laughs> now, I actually think it's going to look nicer with the wall in. It'll look a little in. bit more, uh, more complete, but I've got this whole kind of uh, loft kind of vision in it, and it's going to turn it into a proper flat now. But that's fine, we can adapt around it, we can, you know, I've got to go back to the drawing board now. In order to meet building regulations, as I suggested, Talat will have to build a wall separating the kitchen and the entrance hall to create a hallway with fire doors to all the other rooms. Both bedrooms, the bathroom and the living area will now all lead off this hallway, creating a safe escape route from the flat in the event of a fire. To avoid Talat's mistake, always consult your building regulations officer at the local council planning office before embarking on any building work. Building regulations are needed to ensure any works are safe and legal. 
Building Regulations officers will visit your site to make sure it is running in accordance with the guidelines. You can start work without them, but at your own risk, as any work that does not comply must be changed back, and officers do have the power to shut down any site they consider to be unsafe. The appropriate certificate needed to sell the property will be issued on satisfactory completion of works. So remember, to avoid mistakes, it's crucial to seek permission before starting any building works. You can find the Building Regulations Department at your local council offices. It pays to do this early on in your development in order to avoid delays in starting the works. On satisfactory completion, you'll receive the essential certificate needed to sell the property. So how long do you hope this project's going to take you? I'm hoping for about three months. Three months, that's, that's not very long for a project considering that you're working. Maybe I'm uh, underestimating what's, what's going to happen, but I am walking into it a little bit blind. Are you planning on doing a lot of the work yourself? Some of the work I'll be doing uh, myself with my brothers, I think we're quite handy with, with the, uh, the old hammer. It's three weeks into the project, the new layout has been approved and the work has finally begun. Not content with being his own architect, Talat's also taking on the role of builder. Despite having no experience, he's taken two weeks annual leave to get the project up and running. He's single-handedly putting up the metal stud work for the internal walls. But it's not as easy as it looks. The problem is that my drill bit is shite. Talat's in for another surprise when he presents his amateur architect's drawings to the local builder's merchant. Plasterboard, plasterboard lid. Have you got a set of drawings? Yeah, I have. Right. When I said drawings, I meant drawings. Um, they've got to be by architects, really, because it's, there's nowhere near enough detail on it. It doesn't tell me on there what scale it is. Even are you, are you having a laugh? Do you know how long they took? For yeah, someone who's not an architect, I can believe he works hard on it. But I work in a bank. I've never used a pencil right. in a ruler in my life. Do you okay. know how long it took me to draw that? And that as is long, to scale. As long as a bank worker would take to do an architect's job, I should imagine. As a novice, Talat's convinced he can do it all as well as any professional. But by taking on the roles of project manager, builder and architect, he's on a very steep learning curve. I'm worried he's bitten off more than he can chew. First-time developer Talat Mukhtar recently bought this shell apartment in London's trendy Shoreditch. He wants to spend three months fitting it out and sell it for a massive profit of £100,000. Despite having a full-time job and no building experience, Talat thinks he can do most of the labour himself. For the last two weeks, he's been off work, and with a little help from his brother, Tahir, he's been erecting the metal stud work. Tahir works in computers, and he too has limited building experience. You don't need a nogging in everyone, do you? It doesn't necessarily have to go inside the ridges, does it? The nogging? Uh, I don't know. It's been a month since my first visit. Talat's now a third of the way through the development, and I'm keen to find out what progress he's made and to check out the new hallway. Hi. Hello, how are Hi. you? Very well, sir. So this is the hallway? Yeah. I made a nice big hallway because I think it's quite important for this place where we're trying to emphasise the space and the whole kind of... Uh, the height issues. Often, when you have a, a large hallway or wait, what would appear to be wasted space, it's actually not wasted because it gives a sense that's right. of the fact that you can afford to waste that space. Yeah. So that's the other bedroom. That's the other yeah. bedroom. And this is the main sitting room. Exactly. So what have you found the hardest thing so far? The plans. They're so definitely the hardest thing making sure that everything measures up exactly the, the right proportions the right dimensions things go in the right you know, order and do you think it was time effective to spend two weeks putting the stud work up do you think it might have been better to pay a no, carpenter no, for a day i've always i've always believed that uh, I've been totally against that. Uh, from right from the beginning, I wasn't going to get some, just hire somebody, give him all my money, and say, "Yeah, mate, make me, a, make me a flat." Yeah, I'd have learnt nothing. We'd have achieved not very much. The guy would have made loads of money. 
Are you satisfied with the progress so far? It's been a bit slow, but yeah, we're definitely making progress. You've still got eight weeks left, and, and it can be done in eight weeks. It's just the, my, the bit I feel concerned about and worried for you is that you've both got, you don't have part time jobs, you have very stressful, very full time jobs. Yeah, you say eight, eight weeks, but yeah, it's only a flat, it's only a two bedroom flat. Yeah. <laughs> Famous last words, huh? Oh, yes, that's optimistic. <laughs> I do admire Talat's desire to learn on the job, but one of the key things with developing is to know your limitations. All right, get on with some work, huh? Time is money, so recognising when it's more cost-effective to pay someone to do the work more quickly and efficiently is crucial. It's very difficult with that scale rule. Yeah. It's also essential to be realistic about your budget, and I'm worried talats will just not be enough. Have you got a breakdown of your budget of 30000 And let's have a look at how realistic right, it is. Let's see if we can pull it out. <laughs> Costed about £3,000 per bathroom. Right, and that's for the, for supplying and fitting the bathroom. Yeah, that's right. For the ensuite bathroom, I'd rather have a, a glass partition without a door. Let's say just a frosted or acid etched glass. And um, where's the cost for that here? I'm not costed for those yet. It's very very expensive. Is it? Because you'd have to have toughened glass. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about thousands of pounds. To sell your flat for the sort of price you want to sell it. You really need to have a set, uh, that amazing wow factor That's to right. it to set it apart from all the others. And I'm a little bit concerned that to achieve that, you need to be spending more than £30,000. So how much could you go up to with money? 45000 really. Maybe 50 tops. Upping his budget by 20,000 means Talat will make 20,000 pounds less profit. This practice is something I'd usually advise against, but in this instance, it's exactly the right thing to do. If he doesn't do it, Talat won't have enough money to create the wow factor he needs to get his top selling price. It will cost to get this right, but in the Shoreditch market, buyers spending 350000 on a two-bedroom flat will expect a top-notch property. Different types of buyers have vastly varying lifestyles and diverse expectations to match. That is why it's essential to pinpoint your market and develop your property accordingly. As a rule, young single professionals lead busy, sociable lives and prefer properties in locations with good transport links, shops and nightlife. Most don't have children, so living in flats with stairs and no outside space is not an issue. They want convenience and style in a property, so go for fashionable interiors with all mod cons like a power shower. On the other hand, families generally prefer houses as gardens are a high priority and more traditional layouts are popular, so avoid the open plan arrangement. I find that a kitchen breakfast room is one of the key selling features for this market. Another distinctive market for would-be developers is the downsizers. These are usually older buyers who are looking for a smaller, functional and low maintenance property. As a general rule, fittings should be traditional, so steer clear of stainless steel kitchens, which are difficult to clean. So remember, different types of buyers lead different lifestyles. You need to pinpoint your market and renovate your property accordingly without spending more than you have to. Get this right and you will achieve your top selling price and maximum profit. The Shoreditch market is a unique mix of high-earning city slickers and young creative types. They've swapped the conventional for loft-style living, preferring big open spaces with lots of natural daylight, as many work from home and enjoy entertaining. One of the absolute key rooms to get right for these buyers is the kitchen. I saw a beautiful kitchen in a magazine. Went to their London showroom to find that the kitchen which I'd fallen in love with cost uh, costs fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> you know, which so is your whole budget. My whole budget. <laughs> so, so how much are you planning on spending? 
about ten thousand pounds, I'd say. So a fifth of your budget is going to be on the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah, I, I think that's probably right, considering what you're trying to achieve with the flat and the kitchen is going to be the wow factor isn't it whatever your budget you can create a really expensive look by using ideas from top kitchen manufacturers and incorporating them into your own design the latest trends include floating kitchens suspended from the wall without legs or plinths Simple flush units free from panelling add to this sleek effect. A combination of raw materials such as granite, glass and stainless steel is standard. Beautifully designed state-of-the-art appliances like glass-fronted fridges, oversized hobs and seamless sinks won't fail to wow any buyer. Finally, an integrated coffee machine, a high-tech steam oven or shower head style tap are the must have kitchen gadgets right now. Creating a kitchen of this high standard for £10,000 will take focus, lots of research and relentless shopping around. A full time job in itself. And with mortgage payments of £700 a month, Talat can't afford to let this become an endless drawn out project. I think your main problem is that you're not organized enough and you're not ordering everything in time and these kitchens here i know take three or four weeks to come and some kitchens can take seven or eight weeks which is when it's meant to be going on the market have you actually made a decision about buying a kitchen yet uh no i haven't actually quite made the decision about which kitchen i'm going to buy i know where the kitchen's going i know what style of kitchen i want but it's literally just a case of now choosing and putting my order down. How long exactly do you mean? I mean, next week or this yeah, week? Yeah, a week to two weeks' time, I've made that decision for sure. And uh, ordered it? And ordered it. So within two weeks from today, you'll have ordered the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you to it. Oh, <laughs> For a first-time developer who's given himself just three months to finish a complex build, Talat's not showing much sign of stress. I'm too cool for school. Nothing can uh, shake me. That's a problem. I'll always be calm in the face of adversity. That's when I shine. This development's certainly not shining. Two weeks come and go, but Talat still hasn't ordered his kitchen and no more progress is made on site. As he works all week at the Merchant Bank, Talat's doing this project in his spare time. It's already halfway through and he's only just got round to getting a professional builder, Colin, who's helping him at weekends. Because they're only working at weekends and there's just the two of them, it's another whole month before the walls are actually finished. side to it, to it more than anything. Styling of it, the design, creating the space. I've been thinking about it for so long. It's my baby. It's all I think about. It's now more than two thirds of the way through the project. With such a long way to go and no end in sight, Talat's finally realised he can't do everything himself. My workload's quite heavy duty. Maybe it's better for me to kind of hand it over to some professionals who can take it off my hands. You know, I'm, I'm satisfied. I wanted to get my hands dirty and I have done. But getting the professionals in is a whole new task in itself. Talat's now under pressure to find the right team to take over the project. After a stressful morning on the trading floor, he rushes off to get a quote from one of the many potential contractors. I'm a bit, I'm a bit un unnerved about having to leave because the market's going up and down faster than, uh, faster than the Tart Snickers at the moment. <laughs> It's all right, it'll be okay. Winning is always the thing we've got to do. Losing is not an option. Can we just talk about what level of finish you're looking for um, on the walls? The floor will be finished in a wall now. My initial concerns about Talat juggling this development with the demands of his job appear to be justified. No, that's my work. Hello? Yeah, I'm on my way, sir. I'm on my way, Governor. 
Amazingly, Tallet's still got a smile on his face, but I'm not sure for how much longer. Right. Okay, thanks. Gotta go. Merchant banker Talat Mukhtar has a dream to transform this concrete shell into a designer apartment making a massive £100,000 profit. Despite having no building experience, so far he's done much of the work himself and progress has been slow. At long last, he's finally ready to hand the project over to a contractor. It's taken Talat six whole weeks to find the right man. That man is Dennis and today is his first day on the job. Talat originally wanted to finish this project in three months. His three-month deadline has just gone, but now Dennis is on board, things should really get moving. It's the big day. Talat's at work, but his brother Tahir is on site. Um, we need manpower. We could use at least four labourers. It could take ten days to clear the whole flat. No, I don't think it would take ten days. Well, if I estimate ten days, I'm being safe. With twice as many labourers, all we need to do is halve the amount of time. This is a new guy we've hired to do, do some of the building work. Um, he's supposed to have organised a plasterer. The plasterer hasn't turned up. By the time Dennis's right-hand man starts to tidy up, it's lunchtime. And Talat pays a flying visit, expecting to find the plastering well underway. Where's the plasterer? I don't know. I've tried his phone. I don't know where he is. Now, I'm on schedule and the plasterer's not here. Um, well, I don't see that at this point in time as being serious. Dennis talks a lot. I don't want to talk. I really want to see some action. At this point in time, plastering is not an issue, is it? What I'm saying is... It's unfortunate. What I'm saying is it's unfortunate that the plaster was not here this morning. It's been quite stressful at work. It's always quite a busy day anyway. Um, it didn't help too much. I was sitting there worrying about what's going on over here. If you want to say, well, I'm sorry, Dennis. I was getting a few conflicting reports about this is happening, this is happening. I wanted to hand it over to someone, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm the governor. Really, I am the governor here. After a disastrous day, Talat decides not to hand the project over after all and is back to square one. In a desperate attempt to keep the site moving, however slowly, Talat continues labouring in his spare time, tiling one of the walls in the apartment with slate. Last time I saw you, you were going to get a, a main contractor to finish the job. Yeah. And you haven't got a main contractor? No. no um... I tried to take that route, but uh, I never found uh, any contractors who were really kind of in tune with my kind of thoughts, what I wanted to achieve. The other point was uh, their prices were astronomical. One of the contractors was saying the plastering would cost um, £5,000 and it would take them a week to do it. It cost me £400 and it took me a day to get it done. Any main contractor is quite reluctant to do the second half of a job because it's, I think partially because they slightly worry about why halfway through you're not going down the same route and they would expect to have the job right at the beginning and do the whole thing. That's so right. they do tend to charge a premium for that. So halfway through a site, you'll find it much easier to employ subcontractors directly rather than take on a project manager or a main contractor. To be honest, when I came to handing it over, I was like, really kind of a bit nervous i didn't really truly want to hand it over to someone i realized because i personally felt i was a bit of a failure i'm a bit of a control freak after four months the development is running a month over schedule despite having a full-time job from now on talent will project manage the site himself bringing in subcontractors to do the work quite lucky in some respects that i'm actually situated right on a massive building site. Yeah, you meet plasterers and you meet various other trades, chippies and what have you, who can come in and do the work. Every day, after a hard slog at the Merchant Bank, Talat visits the site to oversee subcontractors and plan the development. The rest of his spare time is spent sourcing fixtures and fittings. Wow. That is something unique. What's it called? Feng Shui. 
Yeah, I can see why. But Tellett's had a change of heart about the long-term future of his development, which could seriously affect his choices. About a third of the way into the project, I decided I wanted to keep the place and rent it out as opposed to sell it. Why did you decide to do that? I realised this is going to be something pretty special and quite spectacular, and I didn't want to just do it and yeah, sell it and then try and move on and do something else. It's just that the danger with a beautifully finished flat that's very modern, if you rent it out, there's a certain amount of, of wear and tear that happens. And so when you do come to sell it in the future, then it's not going to be a newly finished flat unless you do it all over again. The kind of market which I'll be renting it out to is going to be like the young professional city types, you know, who um, like quality apartments and are prepared to pay for it. In a perfect world, people who rent want a new kitchen and new bathrooms. And so you're actually better off with renting, putting in slightly cheaper units that you can replace every few years. Whether developing at the top, middle or bottom end of the market, the same rule applies. You must decide if you're in it to make a quick profit or for long-term gain. Selling a property is less of a risk. The aim is to get your profit out quick and walk away with a lump sum of cash. This money can be used to replace a salary whilst continuing to develop. Alternatively, it can be used to lower your loan for the next development. Renting is a long-term investment, but your cash is tied up in the property and could be at risk if the market drops. However, a rental property can give a source of income and provide security in years to come. Due to the current state of the stock market, many people are choosing to invest in property instead of pensions. But be warned, being a landlord can be a lot of hassle. Maintenance and redecoration costs can be extremely high. Fixes and fittings will need to be replaced and the property may need to be furnished at extra expense. And when it's not let, you have to cover the mortgage costs. So remember, selling a property will give you a lump sum of cash that can be used for other developments. Keeping a property and renting it out is a long-term investment for the future. Whether you decide to rent or sell, any profit you make will be liable to tax. Now Talat's renting out his flat, I've come to see if he's taking my advice about the kitchen. His original budget was £10,000. I'm now only going to spend about £5,000 on a kitchen. However, the effect and the look of it will still have that wow factor. You can create that stunning kitchen on a lot less money by using perhaps cheaper units and using more expensive worktops, splashbacks and appliances, which dress it up to look fantastic. It won't look naff. I wouldn't let anything naff go in this place. No, I'm sure you won't. I mean, it's just really important to always keep your eye on the finish and keep your eye on, on the wow factor. Tell it's right to opt for a cheaper kitchen he can regularly replace, but he's still got to attract those big money renters. Luckily, creating the wow factor with memorable design ideas needn't cost a fortune. Using a sliding door instead of a wall. Installing two wash basins as opposed to one. Or a sexy double shower can be done on a budget. But the cheapest option is to use eye-catching ideas like inexpensive coloured lights and quirky stone cladding which will appeal to the young, trendy rental market. Talat's gone for a feature wall of Indian slate. That's gives you the wow factor and the radiators as well, which are fantastic. How much does slate cost? Slate cost me in total about £500. £500 is actually very cheap for creating an amazing focal feature in the room. Talat's doing well with his design ideas, which will give his property the edge it needs. But he has taken on a lot project managing this site. Finding subcontractors, sourcing the materials and chasing the suppliers is all down to him. And he's still juggling this with his full-time job at the Merchant Bank. Is it any wonder then that the scheduling is now holding things up? Talat's waiting for a boiler to be delivered and fitted. Without the boiler, the flooring, kitchen and bathrooms can't be fitted. I'm really worried that something is going to have to give. 
For the last five months, Talat Mukta has been struggling to develop a trendy two-bedroom apartment and hold down his full-time job in investment banking. The project is now running two months over schedule and the flat is nowhere near finished. But in property developing, time is money and Talat has just made a life-changing decision. I've left investment banking now um, for good. I'm now focusing on property development as my career. With no regular income, Talat is under still more pressure to make this project a success. Depends on what I can achieve now, not just going turning up for work every day and getting paid. It's up to me now to try and uh, accomplish my own aspirations. The project has reached a standstill. Talat's first challenge is to get it moving again and fast. The whole site was being held up by the boiler, but not anymore. <laughs> With a boil approved and the plumbing system tested, everything else can now happen. At long last, the walnut flooring, which was delivered and paid for months ago, is finally laid. After weeks on site, Talat's designer bathroom fittings can now be plumbed. And with no job to distract him, Talat can address every detail. A light of this quality is going to be around about £160, that price range. It's good quality light, yeah? good quality light. At last, the carcasses are fitted. The doors can go on and the kitchen starts to take shape. To get the look, Talat designed it himself. Colin? Yeah. What do I do here? To cut costs, he bought it flat packed from a high street retailer for just a thousand pounds. Good work. And Talat's doing exactly the right thing, splashing out twice as much money on a granite worktop to enhance his inexpensive kitchen. Good quality appliances will complete the look. his top rental price, Talat needs to furnish the apartment, an added cost that was never budgeted for. But in this market, it can't be just any old furniture. It's got to be the right look and quality without costing a fortune as it could get damaged. It's taken Talat almost six months to transform a concrete shell into a designer apartment. He needed to achieve the wow factor. And he's done it in spades. Nowhere more so than with the open plan living and dining space. Talat has managed to create the bright, spacious feel of a loft Yet this urban apartment also has a real warmth, given by the use of materials like walnut for the flooring and the wall of slate cladding. Stylish appliances enhance the simple sleek kitchen, but the beautiful granite work surface really gives it the wow factor. The industrial looking concrete ceilings and the state of the art radiators are softened by the faintly coloured lighting. Talat's choice of furniture is contemporary yet welcoming, creating a comfortable environment, perfect for entertaining and designed to seduce his target market. The same themes are echoed throughout the apartment. The master bedroom has an effortless elegance enhanced by feature lighting. In the ensuite bathroom, Talat's cleverly used limestone effect tiles which are cheaper than the real thing and won't stain. The second bedroom with its quirky radiator has a stylish simplicity. Luxury fixtures and fittings have been used in the master bathroom. It's a great look, but my worry is they could get damaged whilst the flat is let and are too expensive to replace. Now, this is really, really nice. Having looked at the other developments that we looked at during this project, you've really achieved what you were setting out to achieve. 
and actually it compares very favorably with them and you've got the wow factors in just about all the rooms i particularly like the furniture throughout the flat which is absolutely correct and i have to the slate on the wall there it's great this is one of the better moments of it all actually because you know having seen all the uh, ideas come together and seeing them work it's the most satisfying thing the only thing i would say is that anything that's so on vogue at the moment will be out of vogue that's right relatively quickly style statements are are of the moment absolutely I, otherwise it would just look like a standard flat which is nice and cozy and caters for everybody but i didn't want that i wanted to and want a place which makes an impact so just how much did this contemporary style cost Talat's original budget was £30,000. He soon realised he'd have to up this and has done well to come in under his new budget of £50,000. He spent £11,000 on the building work, including electrics and plumbing. To get that wow factor, Talat upgraded the flooring, which cost him £6,000. He got a cheaper kitchen than he originally planned, so this with the two bathrooms came in at £13,500. Because the project took so long to complete and to pay for essential wow factor features like the wall of slate, Talat's contingency for this and mortgage costs ended up costing £9,000. As Talat will be renting the flat out, he had to spend a further 5500 on furnishing his property to the high standard his rental market will expect. But he still managed to do all this for a total budget of £45,000. Talat bought his property for £220,000. He spent 45,000 renovating it, making his total investment 265,000 pounds. That's a big investment for someone without a day job. So are you at all concerned about the fact that you now don't have a regular income? No, I'm not, because I'm very, I feel it's one of the most positive things I've actually done. This has been a trial and error uh, on this development. I'm glad it's worked out okay, but yeah, I know for future developments, it's going to be, yeah, I know how it works, I know the system, and yeah, I just feel really, really positive about it. But with no job to support him, Talat's got to get this apartment rented out. All his money is tied up in the project, and with mortgage payments of £700 a month to find, the estate agent's rental valuations are crucial. So this is it. Which strip floor? Touch floor. Hardwood. Okay. You've got real volume. I love the radiators. Yeah. I like the fact that you've got sort of big floor to ceiling windows. Absolutely. It lets lots of light in. Yeah, that's right. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Very funky. Funky. Yeah. This is way different. Where's this one? Wow. Great tub. Talent needs at least £450 a week to make this a worthwhile development, but will he get it? 400 a week, I think, is a price that will attract the right sort of people to come and see this property and I think you know Talit should be able to achieve a, a, a let quite quickly. I think if he gets onto the lettings market sooner rather than later he's got a very good chance of, of getting near sort of 450, 460 a week for it. I think you're probably looking at about 450 pounds uh, a week. Touch more than you expect. Yeah I'm, I'm really impressed. If Talat does rent out the apartment for £450 a week, it will give him a yield of almost £2,000 a calendar month. Take away his mortgage costs of £700 and the property would give him an income of £1,300 a month. That's before tax, wear and tear and periods when it might just lie empty. On these figures, Talat would get a return of just under 10%, which in the current rental market is pretty good. So has Talat managed to hit his target market? Time to let the potential renters decide. 450 a week is what we've got it on for. Stone flooring's nice in the bathroom. It'd be a nice study, actually. Oh, no. There you it's go. It's a fight for this table. <laughs> Definitely a social kitchen. The fittings are quite sort of high spec as well and quite stylish. This bathroom, look at the sink. Brilliant, I really like it. We were sort of looking up to about 500, so this actually does come into our category. It's actually under which is always a really good thing. <laughs> so the agent said that this place is valued at £450 a week. Um, 
uh, so it comes down to now, you know, whether we'd we'll be prepared to sort of go the extra £50. Pounds. The specifications of the flat are much better than other flats I've seen. The radiators and the lights and the kitchen and the walnut floor is really nice. I mean, it, it looks like it's laid really nicely. Yeah, I'm certainly tempted by it myself. It's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> I can see us in here. I can, actually. <laughs> Well, the renters seem suitably impressed, but I'm still curious to know what the apartment is worth and how much profit Talat would make if he did sell it. We were originally hoping to sell the flat for 350,000. I know you've had three people around to value it. What figures do you Yeah, I've got varying kind of, kinds of uh, uh, quotes. I've had 350,000 pounds, 360,000 pounds, and the highest, which was th quite way out, £415,000. Right. Uh, obviously, I was quite pleased to hear that, but I'm not too sure that if that's yeah. too realistic. Well, the average of those three figures would be 375000 which, if you did achieve that, you'd make £110,000 profit, which is a seriously, seriously good profit. Um, yeah, I'm not going to sell it. I don't want to take the money and run. I'm in this for the, for the long term now. But don't forget, there is quite a glut of properties on the rental market at the moment. Yeah. And therefore, you do stand a good chance of having it empty for periods of time because there are more flats and not enough tenants to fill them. I don't think it will stay vacant too long. However, in, in, if in the event it does, I can cover it. Now, you set yourself an original time scale of three months to do this project in. And it's actually taken you nearly twice as long to renovate. Why do you think that's been? Like you say, Sarah, I think it's very possible to do it in three months with a team of guys. I now have a team of people. I didn't then. I was quite naive, I, I admit to you. I think my um, calculations on how much it would cost me were quite naive and my time allocation was quite naive as well. But that's fine, that's, that's the way it goes. When, you, when, you, when you've not done anything before, yeah, you, you, and you, you learn. Going to, yeah, and you learn. And you take that experience on to the next project with you. Talat took an enormous risk buying and developing this property. He took a long time doing it and had to learn new skills every step of the way. But his commitment and willingness to learn did pay off, and he's produced a very impressive product. I believe if he carries on learning and working this hard, he may well one day make a very successful developer. Six weeks later, Talat still not rented his apartment, but he's against selling it and getting his profit out while the sales market is up. Next time on Property Ladder, I'm in the sleepy southwest town of Emsworth with an ambitious young couple who want to build a loft conversion and turn a small bungalow into a family home. But are they trying to run before they can walk? I would be surprised if, if it would be worth doing a loft conversion after the money it's going to cost you.